Hi everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to my channel. I am going to be crafting for spring today as promised. So in the previous video, I was finishing up quite a bit of unfinished tasks on my crafting to-do list and I really wanted to get that done so I could start crafting for spring. Before I get into my video, I wanted to mention that for probably the next couple months, I'm going to try to do a video every other week. As you probably have noticed, I have skipped a couple weekends and it's because for two things, I need a little bit of a rest in between some of these videos. Videos, and they take a lot of time and a lot of work and they're very fun to do but I also need to make time for myself as well so the other reason and in a effort to make time for myself I decided that I'm gonna start my very first Kimberbell project so so for springtime I am going to focus on working on this cute Kimberbell Lucky Us pillow and this is what I'm going to be doing behind the scenes. So I have, I bought the entire fabric kit because I'm just so excited. So I have all of my little fabrics all cut. I'm ready to go and I actually bought their embellishment kit as well. So I have all their fun embellishments that's going to make up this fun design and I feel like I am going back to school because I have all my directions printed out. I'm putting them in my cute little binder that I made in the last video. I have my highlighters ready and I am just so excited to do this. So I have my directions all printed out. I'm going to be doing this behind the scenes, so I'm not going to be doing this and filming this, but if you hop over to my community tab, I'm going to be posting as I go so you can see this whole thing come together. So by the time this video comes to you, I'm hoping I will have at least a few blocks done. So keep an eye out in the community tab. So I just wanted to let you know kind of what to expect on the channel for the next couple months. I am just definitely trying to build in some more downtime and create some more white space in my calendar. So I'm going to be doing every other weekend for posting for just a little bit. Okay, so for today we are doing spring crafts. I'm super excited. I am doing a lot of spring crafts, but I'm also doing a lot of spring cleaning type crafts. So I feel like this is a great time of year to get a little refresh. There's a lot of purging that goes on, but if I'm honest, I kind of do that every two to three months anyway, because that's just kind of my personality. But I love to bring new pieces into the home. So a lot of the things are going to be spring themed, but a few things are just going to be me bringing a little bit of refreshing new decor into our home. So let's go ahead and get started. We have a lot to do today. I think we have a total of 10 crafts on my to-do list. So let's get started. I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so before starting our first little craft, please be sure to utilize that description box below the video. There is a little arrow next to the title, which will allow that description box to open and you'll find all of the supplies I'm using listed individually by craft that I will be doing today. Also, you will find all the tools that I'm using. I'll link the little caddy systems that I have and that I really like and all of my machines. So pretty please utilize that. I have been trying to gently remind that in all of my videos, but I still get a lot of questions that are already pre-answered for you in that description box. So this is going to be a fun little craft and I found this cute little almost shiplap inspired house at the Target dollar spot. It was the $3 item and I thought it was really cute so I picked up two of them and for my first little craft with it I'm going to do a little Hello Spring sign. I grabbed this from my little infusible ink stash. This is one of the little metal um, blanks that you can use with infusible ink and I haven't quite used it with infusible ink yet because I haven't been quite inspired with how to use it yet. I'm sure I will be, but for right now, I'm going to be using it as somewhat of an embellishment for this project. So I'm gonna put some vinyl on this. I'm also going to put some vinyl on here and we're just going to make it look super cute. So the file I'm using, I'll put in the description box below. It's from Design Bundles. I really like it. We're going to have some really pretty vines actually on the base here. And then I'm gonna put a little Hello Spring text on our actual piece of metal. So one thing I didn't do because I wanted to demonstrate this is there is a little protective layer on these little metal sheets. So you'll want to be sure that you remove that first. And so I'm going to take that off really quickly. Now, normally I would apply some rubbing alcohol onto anything that I'm doing some vinyl on, but since I'm just removing this now, I think it is perfectly clean and all set to go. Ooh, that's a little bit of an obnoxious sound. Okay, and then there's also a film on the back as well, so I'm gonna take that off too. Okay, so here is our piece. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to place my little Hello Spring text on there. So I'm gonna grab some of this transfer tape, and then we're just gonna bring this all together. 
I'm so excited to start doing spring crafts. Like I said, this is going to be a little compilation of both spring crafts, but also some refreshing spring cleaning items. So either items that I just needed to do for spring cleaning purposes, just to give the house a refresh, or items to decorate for spring. So a fun little compilation and things that I have been really looking forward to bringing to my craft table. Okay, I'm gonna rub the back of that vinyl down as well. And gently take this off. Okay. So I have a larger piece of transfer tape here, but it's because I want to be able to do the vines as well with this. So I'm going to hover over and just place this as centered as I can, although that having that be such a big piece creates its own little problems. Not problems, but obstacle, I guess. Okay, that looks pretty good. Put that down really quickly. Okay, and then let's take that transfer tape off. Make sure I don't have any bubbles see this transfer tape here is the final look for that I really like that I really wanted a nice white on that pretty metal I think it really lends well to the spring look I have a little bubble here I'm just going to remove that with my fingernail but other than that that looks really really cute nice and refreshing okay so this is going to go in the center and I am going to place that down before my vines. That way I can see how I want those vines to be around that. So in order to do that, I'm going to put some mounting tape on the back because I want this metal piece to be raised off of the surface. So I just picked up some mounting tape. You can get this from any craft store, really any store, I'm sure, as well, regular store. And let me turn this over. And to get it started because it's nice, new, and fresh. There we go. Let me know what you're crafting in your own craft room as well. It's so inspiring. I Our little trees are all starting to bloom and I feel like it's just so inspiring to have a nice new season upon, it, upon us because it just brings with it some fresh inspiration and I like the natural change that it brings. So change in decor, change in routine. I just love that. So I love living where there are seasons. Okay. I think two will be just fine for that. So just enough to raise that up. So this is mounting tape again. So it's got some thickness to it, as you can see. So that will help just raise it off the surface. Of course, if you want it to be raised up even more, you could double it up or get thicker mounting tape. And then I'm just gonna take off the little protective wrapper and then we're gonna place this on here. So I'm just gonna leave the bottom one down here just so I kind of know. I'm trim just a little. That way I don't mount it to my transfer tape. Okay. I kinda want that there. Okay, I think that'll look actually pretty nice. So I'm going to place that where I like it and then press down. Perfect, okay, so we have our first little piece down and now we're just gonna dress it up a little bit more. So this whole design is one SVG and what I did is I just broke it apart in Cricut Design Space so that I could size my vines differently. I wanted them to be a little bit bigger and they are just going to provide a little embellishment to the top and bottom which I really like. So I'm going to just do that same method with my transfer tape, scrape down the front and the back and then this time since I know I roughly the size I need of transfer tape, I can go ahead and just trim that down. Sometimes too much transfer tape can pose a little obstacle when trying to place things straight. So 
so the less transfer tape you use, the better. Or in other words, I should say, fitting the transfer tape fairly close to the design is much preferred. Okay, so now I will place this first one. How cute. Oh my gosh, I love it already. Okay, pretty, pretty. I'm just centering that visually how I like it. Very cute. Okay, and then I'll just rip that down. Very simple. I love looking, you know, at the little dollar stop or any area of the craft store or any store, honestly, for blanks like this because they have such potential for being so neat. And you could look at this and do something totally different with it. That's why I picked up two because I feel like there are just so many things you could do with this. And the, it was just so well done. I love the little faux shiplap look of it. It's just right up my style alley, if that makes sense. Okay, we're using that transfer tape to do that bottom part and we will be all done with this. And I really like, it's very subtle, but I like how it's raised up off of there. You could even go one more if you'd like, but I like how that gives it a little bit of dimension. When you have little no, little touches like that and give it dimension like that, it really takes your craft from being kind of looking beginner to looking a lot more professional, in my opinion. I think some of those subtle choices that you can make by just having things raised up or, you know, little touches like that can really make, make it look like you bought it in a store, I suppose. Okay, let me center, center this how I like it. Oh, I love this. Okay, I like that there. Okay. And all done. Move that transfer tape. And we have completely transformed this into a really pretty little piece of spring decor. Ooh, that was almost a tongue twister. Piece of spring decor. I love that. I think it's really pretty. I think it's simple and subtle, but I think it's going to look really, really nice. So I think that this is a really nice blank. Be sure to check your um, local Target and see if they are offering this in your little dollar spot. Again, it was $3, but I think it is well worth the $3 and pick up one or two or three because definitely have some potential with your Cricut machine in dressing this up. So I love this. Let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I am going to decorate a little pillowcase. I love using the Cricut infusible ink pillows even when I am not using infusible ink. So you could do an infusible ink project on this. In fact, I do have a tutorial on how to do infusible ink pillowcases and I'll link that for you in case you would like to go that route. I am going to use this really pretty foil iron-on. I will be honest, my foil iron-on tutorial is one of the most popular tutorials on my channel. I did a really pretty um, Jesus cross shirt with this and it was amazing. I still have it, I still love it. And I've had this leftover foil because I, comes with quite a bit on a roll, but I've had this and I am again, again just shopping my craft space much more this year and I thought this would be really pretty on a pillowcase. So I have that pillowcase, I'll link it down below just as always and I'm going to just begin weeding out my design here. So this design I have had my eye on for quite a while and I love it when I am looking at designs I love putting a list of favorites together and this has been on my list of favorites for a long time and I thought that it really lent well to um, just some really nice spring decor as well so this is a really pretty bee design it has a little bumblebee on it and it says welcome to our hive and I really struggled and went back and forth with what I wanted to do with this design. And I say that in a good way because I struggled because I felt like this could be so many beautiful things. I thought it would be a really pretty door round. I also thought it would be um, just a really pretty piece of wood decor in our home. But in the end, when I 
was thinking about spring and noting that I had some of this leftover foil iron on, I really, really wanted to do a really nice pillowcase for it. So I'm going through and I'm just doing the background first. I use this, okay, one of the most popular uh, questions on my video on foil iron on is what blade did you cut it with? I just used the regular blade, the regular Cricut blade. I think it's called the fine point blade. Is that just the regular one? Yes, just the regular blade. I didn't change out. I didn't use anything fancy. And then there is a setting in Cricut Sign Space that says foil iron on. So you'll just want to make sure that you are using the correct cut setting and then just use your regular blade. Okay, so I'm just going to go through. I'll start kind of top to bottom here and get all of these little pieces out. Being mindful to get all of the little scraps because if any of your scraps are weeded but then stay on your carrier sheet, they will. I am so tongue tied today. I'm so sorry. I have a venti Starbucks coffee with me, but it's not quite finished yet. So maybe I should just take a second and enjoy that. Honestly, to keep it real, I had to restart my computer probably seven or eight times before starting to craft today. Had an update and then another thing had an update and then another thing had an update and then it didn't want to do audio. And I tell you all of this because that might be why I'm a little tongue tied. I feel like I'm just a little cross-eyed at this point and I am not techie. So those things get overwhelming in a hurry. I'm much more in my happy zone when I can just start crafting. So that was quite an experience this morning. Okay, so this is kind of where it's heading. Welcome to our hive. And then lots of beautiful detail in the bumblebee. And then we have some vines to the right and to the left that are going to just really provide some fun detail. So I have my heat press all heated up. One of the best things about using pillowcases as decor and decorating them is that once the season is over, you can just simply take the pillowcase off and store it, obviously replacing your pillow with a new seasonal pillowcase. But I say that because the storing is so small. Look, this is all you would have to store, just this tiny little thing. So I love having a new little piece of pillow decor for each season because it's just one of those things that is simple and easy to switch out. It doesn't take a lot of room, but it can really just bring a whole new vibe into the season that you're in. Okay, so all of these have just little pieces. I'll go ahead and just keep weeding those and we will get this pressed on. It's so pretty. Foil is so easy to work with, so do not be intimidated by it. It's easy peasy and it's beautiful. And if I didn't link it already, I'll link it now. I'll link that t-shirt tutorial because this is really fun to use on t-shirts. And again, I absolutely love how my t-shirt came out in the tutorial that I did. It's so pretty. And this looks really good on dark things as well. I think I did like a dark charcoal shirt. And wow, it was so, so pretty. Okay, I am finished. And now what I like to do, especially with big designs like this, is I like to turn this over and really just take my time and run my weeding tool throughout, just double checking. If I run my weeding tool along the design, it kind of helps my eye track and focus where I need to double check all these areas to make sure everything is weeded out. I have definitely gotten to the point where I have 
pressed my design onto my shirt and there has still been something unweeded. So I'd just like to take that extra moment or two. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to pre-press my pillowcase just to get any moisture out of the pillowcase. Also to get these little lines and creases out and then I will lint roll it and place my design on there. So let's go ahead and do the pre-press. Okay, so I have this at 295 and I just checked my heat settings on Cricut Design Space, or I'm sorry, Cricut.com. They have a heat guide. I'm going to pre-press it for about five to 10 seconds. And it's not gonna get all of those wrinkles out, but I'm gonna shift it down just a little bit. I also like to keep my zipper at the bottom. That way, once the pillow is in, you don't see it. Okay, so that's all ready to go. Okay, so now that that's ready, I'm going to place, oops, I'm gonna lint roll this. Make sure I get a fresh piece here. Make sure there's just nothing that's going to prevent that iron on from laying perfectly down. Okay, let me move this back just a little bit. Okay, again, my zipper is at the bottom. Go ahead and do however you'd like. And I will have to press this twice because my design is bigger than my heat press, but no big deal. Let me grab my measuring tape. Double check here. So we're at about three and a quarter. We are at about three, so we can move that over a little bit. The creases actually somewhat help when centering too. So it's not always a bad thing when you can't get those completely out. Three and a quarter. And now that one's kind of at three. I might've gone a little too far. Okay, that's probably perfect at this point. Taking my time here to make sure. Okay, perfect. And then here is three and a quarter, and there is, come down just a little. Okay, I am going to call that good. Okay, there we are. Let's go ahead and press this on. Okay, I'm gonna do the top, almost half, probably top three quarters first. Again, 295 degrees for 30 seconds. Okay, the last three seconds. And I'm just gonna pull this out so I can reposition. That looks really nice. Okay, and reposition so that, actually, you know what I can do? I'll just turn this around. Here we go. And I'm going to make sure that my zipper is not on the heat, um, where the heat is going to be. So I wanna make sure that zipper falls off the edge there. And the reason I turned that around is just so that this bulky area was not bunched up back there. Make sure that can lay nice. So again, my zipper is off of the heat area. And there we go. Okay. Let's go ahead and let this cool. It is a cool peel, and then we will reveal the design. But this is how it's looking with that sheet still on there. It already looks really pretty. Okay, I'm gonna allow that to cool a little bit. If you place it on a cooler surface, it helps draw out that heat. Already it looks gorgeous, but just wait. It's amazing what that carrier sheet hides because the moment that that is peeled off, it's just gorgeous. So letting that cool down and then get ready it's going to be beautiful okay here we go can you just tell already you can tell with the lights that it's just stunning ah oh, so pretty i don't know why i waited so long to play with this again and i'm just monitoring i don't have anything coming up at all the press was perfect just monitoring to make sure everything has laid down i don't see one single problem area at all Okay, let's bring that up so you can see. Oh, that's so pretty. 
It is so pretty. I'm gonna go ahead and put the pillow in too so you can get the full idea, but my goodness. Also, make sure that you size your design small enough too because once that pillow comes in and raises it up, then you want to compensate so that your design doesn't fall towards the edges too much. You want to be able to see it. You'll see that in a moment when I place that pillow in, but so pretty. I think mine was around 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. I just go slightly lower than that 12 inch um, dimension. Okay, and I just get these pillow forms off of Amazon. I'll do my best to find and link them once more in that description box, but let me put this in and you'll get to see how pretty it is with the pillow inside. And really when you're looking for pillow forms, you're just gonna wanna make sure that you know the dimensions of the pillowcase you're using and then obviously the pillow form that you're buying, you'll just wanna make sure that those match up. I know that's probably pretty obvious, but it's also one of those things that you can accidentally misorder. So I'm just gonna zip this little closer closure shut. You can get these little pillow forms anywhere. And there we go. In fact, I can't remember if this, I have so many of the little pillow fillers. I can't remember if this one was from Amazon or not. This one might be Ikea. I can't remember. I have so many, but how pretty. And I love that, you know, as the design falls off to the sides to it, shows that little glimmer of that foil. I just think that's gorgeous. I am really happy with that. I'm gonna have to buy another roll of this because the more I work with it, the more I love it. I really wanna do a greeting card with it too. So this is how it turned out. I love it. And I honestly think once spring is over, this is something that you could really enjoy, you know, well into summertime as well. It's just very pretty, very pretty design. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to our next craft. Okay, one thing I really love to decorate is little flower pots. Now I found this little pretty flower pot at Joanne and I really liked it because it was just really modern looking and it gave you also a lot of space for de a little decoration. I purchased it originally for my craft space thinking I would put some pens in it, but it's been sitting in my craft space for some time now and I really haven't found a need for it. I just have lots of other containers that I guess are doing a perfect job. So I haven't quite used this, so I thought this would be really pretty for a little spring plant. And if you have been following my channel for a while, you know that I have done a little planter before and you also know because I mentioned in that tutorial that I really struggle with keeping plants alive. However, since that tutorial I have had a plant for 22 months and I know it sounds really ridiculous that I'm saying that right now. Tw nope, 23 months. I am almost two years of being a plant mama and I have done so well with this plant that I was gifted almost two years ago. So I've, I feel like since then, I have just gained a little bit of confidence with plants, if that makes sense. Sometimes you just need to see that you can do something because before this, I just had a not so very green thumb. And I think I really just got lucky with the plant that I, that I do have because it really lets me know when it's unhappy, which I need for sure. It's like, hey mom, I, I really need some water. Okay, I've already messed up on this little piece. So I need to put a little piece back down. What I did is I found a tile. Oh, hold please, I gotta fix this and then I'll come back. I totally just ripped this little piece of the design up. So let me put that back on there. What I did was I found a little tile SVG and I took that I measured around the perimeter and I measured from top to bottom of this lip area here. And then I just duplicated this little tile in design space on a little template so that I could make a really pretty little tile look on, on this piece of, um, or this little planter. And this might have me earning my stripes in weeding but I think it's gonna be well worth it. So once you get your measurements, what you wanna do is you want to take the height, the width, you want to make a rectangle in design space, 
and that will be your template. And once you have your template, you can just start copying and pasting your design to fill that template and then you will have a little design to weld together. You can weld or attach it together so that it all cuts out as one piece. And you'll see mine in just a moment when it takes shape, but it's so pretty. This is the little tile. Isn't that pretty? And it's got some little pieces in here that I need to slowly get. Now, because this is pretty intricate, once I have it, have one done, I'll probably cut off some of this extra weeding material. That way I don't accidentally lose any of my pieces or have them stick to one another. Okay, so that was an experience, but I will probably be able to tell my plant how much I love my plant to be putting them in such a beautiful pot. And hopefully this pot turns out because I have put a lot of love into it so far. Okay, so a lot of little intricate pieces, a lot of patience, and I think it's gonna turn out beautiful. So one thing I want to be aware of right now, oops, there's one little piece stuck here. One thing I want to be aware of is that my pot, I don't believe that this is completely flat. I think it does taper a little bit. So I want to put some relief cuts in my transfer tape and hopefully it lays down really nicely. So we will see. That's kind of one of the best things about crafting is you can just, See how it turns out and if you don't like it you can redo it or whatever but how cute I think this is really pretty and sophisticated I like it a lot okay I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off this side and let's grab some transfer tape so grabbing a clear transfer tape here let's measure it out I kept the weeding in because I want you to see that we all have those relatable moments of weeding something that is, let's see, how do you put it? 
you're praying as you do it that it's gonna turn out because you know you're putting all of your heart into just weeding it. <laughs> That's the best way to put it, right? You're just saying politely, you better look cute when I'm done because right now you're not so cute as I'm weeding you. Okay, there we go. I've got little bits and pieces. We've talked about this multiple times on how we find little pieces of vinyl everywhere once we're done with a project. Mostly on completely different levels of our home than where we craft. Okay, come here. So, uh, I'm going to do this in little sections. That way it doesn't become too overwhelming. I felt like I got better with the weeding as because I had to weed the same thing over and over and over again. I felt like I got better at it because I knew where the trouble spots were. So I knew that the, the little corners liked to come off. I knew that it got really delicate around these little inner vines, if that's what they're called. That's what I'm calling them. So I feel like the first two got really tricky and then I got better as I went. And I had to do a little surgery as I went too because there are times when something's just not gonna weed correctly or or work like it should. Now, because I'm placing this on such a specific area, I'm going to make sure that I trim down my transfer tape just so. I don't wanna have anything extra that's going to make it hard. I might have to say a little crafty prayer that we can get this vinyl up off the transfer tape so nicely. I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay, so before that, let's grab rubbing alcohol. I just have a little rubbing alcohol in a bottle that I purchased off of Amazon and added a little decal. I will place a link in the description box below for this because you guys have been asking and I just need to find the bottle on Amazon and, and link it. But it's really handy to have a little spring bottle of rubbing alcohol for just making sure there's no dust or dirt, oils on the surface. I, I like to wear lotion, so I'm mostly worried about any lotion that I have that's gonna put some oil on the surface because that could prevent the vinyl from laying down just right. Okay, now I'm going to see, can I use this little cup cradle? I have this little cup cradle that's my new bestie. Oh, yes, okay, so it's also a flower pot cradle. Yay! Okay, so let me just burnish this a little bit more. Take my time here. And then, let's see how well we can get the vinyl off. Okay, oh my goodness, I did it. This little plant better love one little piece. Of course, it's the last piece. Where are my tweezers? They're there. The last piece. But you know what? I would say that's pretty darn good. Wouldn't you? I'm happy with that. Okay, one little piece needs to be stuck there. Okay, oh, here we go. Okay, so before I do that, Hopefully this turns out and I don't end up cutting it out of the entire video. I feel like I'm about, um, I don't know, 45 minutes into this one project. But that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna do relief cuts 
in between each of the little tiles. And I will link the little SVG that I used down below. Turn it around. And I'm doing this just because I don't think that my flower pot is an exact straight angle, 90 degree angle. So it's not a completely flat surface. It's, I, I'm sure it's like, I don't know, so close to 90 degrees, but I feel like there's just a little curve. So I want to make sure that I allow my transfer tape to bend with it. Oh, Bethany. Okay. Oh my gosh, real life relatable crafting happening right here. And I'm getting, I was trying to make something cleaner and I almost made a bigger mess. Okay, here we go. All the positive thoughts, all the positive thoughts. Okay, so I am going to start in the middle. And I chose this really light gray just because this is how I like to decorate my home with really soft neutrals. And then I'm just going to go around. So I'm just going to kind of get it started. And I'm going to go this way. And just kind of get it just basically placed. Just kind of lay it down. And then ooh, that one's kind of going crooked. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Nope, it's not completely flat. So I have to just get a little creative so that it kind of lines up at the end here and looks cohesive. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go back and go through with my fingers. And I'll just take it one tile at a time. I'll go through this one and when I get to the certain tile that I'm working on, I'm going to rub down the middle of it first. Yeah, some of these are going to kind of want to be a little wonky. So I'm going to try to kind of straighten it. Force straighten. Luckily though with um, little flower pots, you are going to just see a side of it at one time. So if they're all a little bit, I mean, obviously I'm a recovering perfectionist. I want it to be perfect, but you're only ever really going to see one side at a time. So I think I'm going to give myself some grace here and just Enjoy the pretty side that I'm seeing at that moment. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna start, I think I went through all of the pieces, but I'm gonna go back through with my scraper, probably, probably each one. Ooh, I really like it though. Okay, I'm gonna go through each one, and as I go through, I'm gonna go, with my scraper and just really scrape it down and then I'm going to take the transfer tape off individually. That way I can really focus on each tile. There we go. Push down anything that needs to be pushed down. Ooh, so pretty. Okay, and then on to the next tile. Press, press, press. Press, 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 press. This helps me, I feel like, make it a little bit more manageable. We have so much vinyl going on here. I need to do a little surgery on that one. Tweezers are my best friend with vinyl. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to continue rubbing down with my scraper and peeling off that transfer tape. In fact, it has little cuts in it, so 
I can just kind of rip it off as I go. Oh, that looks so pretty. I really like it. Oh my goodness, I love it. Okay. Okay, and I noticed I had an extra little piece over here. See this little guy? He's not supposed to be there. So I was watching as I was taking my transfer tape off to see where he was missing, and he is supposed to be all the way here. So he traveled quite a far distance from where he's supposed to be. Okay. Oh my goodness. I love how this turned out. I really like it. I think that turned out beautiful. What do you think? It looks like something that you would buy for sure. Definitely something you would find at Marshall's Home Goods. It's going to be beautiful with a plant in it. So wish me all the luck. This will be plant number three that I have in my house. Shortly after my first one made it through the first six months, I bought another one and now I'm on to my third. So Call me a plant mama because I'm on my way. Love this. So another idea of just how you can look at SVGs with a fresh pair of eyes and how you can look at a blank with a fresh pair of eyes and merge them together, if that makes sense. So I love how this turned out. Just a basic tile SVG and then it really just looks amazing on this pot. I love it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick break from vinyl crafts. I have quite a few more vinyl crafts to go, but I'm going to turn the embroidery machine on really quick because it's so relaxing to do, and I feel like after that flower pot, I need a relaxing craft. So I need to embroider some shirts for the girls for Val or not Valentine's Day, for St. Patrick's Day. I'm getting all of my holidays mixed up, and I thought this was a really cute design. It's a cute rainbow design, and then we're going to applique some little clovers on each corner. And then I have an initial here. I'm also going to applique a onesie for my little guy, a little shamrock, and everybody's going to look super cute on St. Patrick's Day. So because St. Patrick's Day is coming up and it's all nice and springy, I'm going to go ahead and get these done in this video as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I have my design printed off from Imbrilliance. I'll link where I purchased this design down below, and I am going to center it onto the machine. I also have this shirt that I absolutely adore. I have used these shirts quite a few times. They're actually sublimation shirts and they sublimate beautifully. So I'll link them down below. I purchased them on Amazon and they have a little peplum bottom. So, so cute. I love the little flutter look and on the little sleeves as well. So they are sublimation shirts, but they also pair well with embroidery as well. So I did a one layer of poly mesh cutaway and then two layers of the tearaway. And I'll link a video on how I do my shirts up in the corner in case you want a full tutorial on how I stabilize and get it all ready from start to finish. But because I've done a video like that already, we're just gonna zoom through this and get this shirt stitched out and then we'll move on to the next craft. So let's get going. Okay, so I wanna make sure that I open up the back of my shirt here and I make sure that the back of the shirt goes under this arm. That way I do not stitch onto the back of my shirt. And then I have the design already loaded on my USB, which is plugged into my embroidery machine. And I will go ahead and just center my design using this little laser and get it all set. Then I'm gonna make sure I trace because I'm using my Mighty Hoop. And I'll make sure that my needle's not gonna come anywhere close to the edge of the hoop. Looks good so far. 
Okay. Oh, we are golden. Okay, now I'm gonna take my design off and we will go ahead and start. So the first one we're gonna do is the bottom of the rainbow. I think it goes from the bottom out. Okay, so I just did the placement stitch for my applique. So the rainbow is all done. And so now I have my pattern. I have heat and bond light on the back. And now I'm just gonna place my patterned fabric down. And I'm going to run the tack down stitch, which, is, which will secure it to the shirt. Okay, so there we go. We have our little shamrock right there i did not get my fabric close enough to that top but it will be okay so i'm going to grab let's see i'm gonna do i like the little snips lately especially when i need to do detailed ones i got close enough to where this is going to work but boy did i get just close enough and Ooh, that looks good actually. So I do, again, I have that heat and bond light on the back. So before I stitch the final stitch, I'm going to make sure that I iron that down and that will get that heat and bond light to secure this fabric to the shirt. Okay, these are so cute. And I luckily found this pretty little gingham fabric at Joann's and it just is the perfect combination I think for these little shamrocks plus I'm going to use this same fabric on the little onesie so the kids will coordinate in a way but still obviously have their own little look okay Almost done, taking my time. And I'm also going to use my lint roller. That's one of my favorite parts, is getting all that loose thread up there. And I have a couple little pieces. There we go. Okay, then I'm going to iron this down really quickly. Oh my gosh, so cute. And there we go. We have our first side done. So I'm going to follow the exact same steps for the next one. I'll do the placement stitch, the tack down stitch, trim it, and then do the finishing stitch. And then the initial in this shirt will be all done. So a very, very quick stitch out, I think. It says it's about six minutes of stitching all said and done. So of course you pause and do all the applique, but it's a very quick stitch out.
Okay, it turned out so cute. I love it. It's just simple but really fun and the girls just love rainbows. So I love that it's going to qualify very nicely for St. Patty's Day, but it also is just fun and girly. So they will love these. I'm gonna go ahead really quickly and just remove the stabilizer from the back. You can also, once the stabilizer has been removed, you can go ahead and put Tender Touch on the back as well. So take that step if you would like. and Or any type of, you know, thread backer or softener on the back of the shirt. You can do that as well. So just ripping off. I have two layers of this tearaway. And I did that because it's just a little bit of a thinner shirt. And it just turns out so nicely. So when it's a little thinner, I just opt to do that double layer of that tearaway, and it has worked so well for me. So, okay, just ripping off as much as I can, clean this up. This just helps if you get as much as you can, it softens the shirt just so it's not so bulky. Okay, and then I'm going to get inside of, I just like to grab the little snips to grab a little corner of the stabilizer inside the shamrocks and get that cleaned up as well. And you can just tell as you remove it how much more flexible the shirt is. Just makes it look and feel more natural. Okay, so you can take on as m or take off as much or as little as you'd like. It's all personal preference. This one and again that's double layered that's why I have to go back in and do one more okay then that final is a cutaway so I'm just gonna go around and pull and then I'll just trim Just kind of take the shape of my design. So easy. These shirts are seriously the best too. They're so nice. Okay, so after this, I think I'm gonna do, oh, I have a really cute little vinyl craft that I want to get done. And then we will do, maybe we'll do the little onesie. That one is a very quick, very quick stitch out, so. I want to make sure that that gets done because that actually has a date that it needs to be done by. Everything else is just for fun, but the little St. Patrick's Day shirts need to be done on time. Okay. Be careful not to cut your shirt here. That would be such a stinker. Okay, I'm going to re-iron. That's a fusible poly mesh cutaway. So I'm going to re-iron that down just to place all those leftover pieces back where I'd like them. Again, you can add a tender touch or whatever backing of your choice there. Oh, that looks really nice. I'm just going to kind of iron around, make that nice and smooth. And it's all done. So sweet. And with the little peplum bottom, I think that's just adorable so cute so simple and i love it okay let's go ahead and do oh i can't wait to show you the next one and then we will move on to the onesie okay so this craft is an example of me doing a little spring cleaning so like i said some of these are spring spring crafts and some of these things are me just giving the house a new spring feel as I am cleaning and just freshening up i love this time of year although i feel like i'm one of those uh, friends that just spring cleans all year long. <laughs> it, I don't need spring in order to clean. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead. I found this beautiful cutting board at Hobby Lobby and I thought it was just beautiful. Now, I'm not personally going to use it as a cutting board. I'm gonna use it for decor and I'm just gonna have it rest on our subway tile backsplash in our kitchen. I think it's just gonna be beautiful. So as a reminder, when applying vinyl to a surface like this, 
Vinyl is not food safe, so you're not gonna want to put food on top of it. You're not going to want to obviously cut food on it. So I'm just clarifying that my cutting board is purely for decor only. So I'm gonna grab some transfer tape and we'll get this right on the board. Okay, so move my little embroidery tools here until we start doing embroidery again. And I'll grab my transfer tape and we will get this done. Okay, again, when I have such a big design, I kind of do my transfer tape in sections. So if you haven't seen me do this before, then this is quite handy. So I'll just kind of expose just about an inch or a little over an inch of transfer tape and I'll lay it down on my design. And then what I do is I just grab that little lip underneath and start pulling. And then I expose that transfer tape and it lays down really nicely. So it's just a nice way to not get so overwhelmed. And then I like this transfer tape because it has the paper backer. So you can go ahead and set that aside. That way when you're done using the transfer tape, you can simply put it on there and reuse it. Okay, where is my scraper? Right there, right where it should be. Let's scrape this down. Now I'm gonna show you something I did with this design. So I purchased this design, I'll link it down below. It's beautiful. Unfortunately, you can't see it quite yet because I'm using a vinyl that has a white background as well. So I pre-weeded it and when I take it off the sheet, you'll see. But it says, bless this home. And it's just gorgeous. This would also make a really pretty front door wood round. So keep that in mind as well. And it's gonna come off super nice. Take your time and don't rip your vinyl. Okay, so you'll notice, now it's kind of backwards to you right now, but you will notice that The dot to the eye for this is a heart. And while that's cute, it's not my style. I don't really, I like it when I do things for the kiddos that have little hearts on the eyes, but for our home decor, I just, I'm not really a fan of how that looks. And we can disagree, you can love that look, that's completely fine. But what I did is I just grabbed a circle in design space right here. I made a circle and then I just put it on my design so that I could replace this later. So I made a little circle in design space and just sized it appropriately. So I'll set that to the side. And what I'm going to do is you'll see my design here. Bless this home. So this is the area I'm talking about right here. I'm simply going to take that off. And I could have not punctured that and used it for something different, but it has a little hole in it, so I'll just go in the trash. So I got that taken off. Make sure that this is all smooth. Okay. First, I'm going to lay down my transfer tape and lay down my design. You could do, whoopsie. You could do, I'm going to do the parchment paper method. That's all I was going to say. You could do it but you, I was thinking I wouldn't have to, but I'm going to do it. It's getting a little clingy for me. Okay, so I have my parchment paper here that I'm going to lay over my project. Then I will lay most of my design on top, except for a little bit at the top. And this allows me to center my design where I'd like it without having to lay it down until I'm ready. Okay. So because that parchment paper is transparent, it gives me a great visual for where my final design will lay down. Okay, so again, I can move it around. I don't have to commit until I am completely ready. And I think that looks nice. Okay, looks good. I'm going to stick down the top part and then I'll just slowly start peeling away that parchment paper. And as I do that, I'm just gonna take my scraper and start scraping that down. Okay. And there we go. Oh, 
very nice. I'm glad I did the parchment paper, however, because that helps me, whoops, that helped me line it up very nicely. Got a little snag there because there's an opening. Oh, my little guy's starting to get upset up there playing with everybody. Might be time for a crafty break. Okay. Peeling this off. And then I will put my, ooh, that's great. Then I'll put my transfer tape right back on, right back on this little backer to save it. And then I can take this little dot to my eye that I made, place it right here, replacing that little heart, and that's all done. How pretty. I love that. I think it's going to look really nice up against our subway tile, and it's just a nice little fresh look for spring in our kitchen. But honestly, this is a year-round project too, but because I'm kind of spring cleaning and getting just a little fresh look everywhere, I thought this would be a fun little addition to this little crafty video. Okay, so I totally fibbed because I didn't realize I already had this hooped, so I need to get this done before I can do my little onesie because I'm going to I like to do my onesies on these little dirky easy frames. They are the best. So I'm going to do this cute tea towel, little hand towel that I found at Hobby Lobby. I just loved it. I thought it just was so springy with the cute colors. And then I am going to do this cute little spring themed, um, design on here. So I found a little scalloped rectangle and then, so there are two different designs. A scalloped rectangle is one design and then the bicycle is a different design. So I merged them together in Embrilliance and I'm going to do this cute little stitch out. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on my machine and we're going to do some applique and some stitching. It's going to be amazing. What I did is I went ahead and I put this on a layer of um, sticky stabilizer and then I did one layer of tear away I did a fusible tear away on the back of the actual hand towel so I'm really excited to see how this turns out and I'm really ready to put this in my kitchen because I think it's just very colorful and fun and it's going to turn out really really sweet Okay, so I have everything ready to go and I have this hooped in a particular way. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that my design is going to stitch out in the correct way. So it's going to stitch upside down, but it's right side up when we use the towel. I did it that way because I didn't, I wanted to allow the towel to fall in the front here and I didn't want it to be so bulky in the back. So that's why I did it the way I did it. And now I'm going to just rotate my design on my embroidery machine so that it stitches in the right direction. And then I'm going to center it. So using the laser and that's good. Okay, so I'm going to also trace just to make sure my needle doesn't come anywhere near my frame, the edge of it. Looks like we are all good. Okay. Okay. Good to go. So I can go ahead and remove my design. So cute. Make sure everything is laying down. And we will start with the placement stitch. Now it doesn't matter what thread color. So I still have that green in from the shirts. But it's not going to matter for this placement stitch. Okay. Now I have my applique fabric. What I did was I wanted to make sure that you couldn't see this beautiful thread and all of this beautiful color through the fabric. So I did two layers of white fabric and then I also did a layer of fusible fleece on the back. So hopefully you can see that. So two layers of fabric and fusible fleece on the back and that just not, and I like how the fusible fleece is also going to give it a little bit of puffy dimension. So I'm going to lay that on top just like that. And then you can see that it provides enough, make sure it does fit. It provides enough layering that you're not going to see all those colors through the white fabric. just going to really quickly change out my thread color before I go trim. So I'm going to do a really pretty pink. Let's see, it almost matches the tassels, but it's 
not quite the same color. So a really nice magenta is what I'm going to do for the satin stitch on this little scalloped rectangle. So I'm going to pull this through really quick and then I'll do my trimming. And then let's see if that's threaded. Yep. Okay. And then we'll go move on to the bicycle. Okay. So here we are so far. And let's make this all nice and picked up here. I get in my crafting mode and I have to make sure I keep my desk all nice and clean. Okay, so I am going to take my time. I have several layers there. And I'm just going to trim around this scalloped rectangle. I'm kind of finding it easier to probably trim the two layers of fabric first and then I'll go back and trim that layer of fusible fleece. Yeah, that's going to be a lot better. It's just too many layers to try and trim all of that at the same time. I don't think, I think it's going to be too messy if I do it that way. So I want to make sure I get a really clean cut. That way my satin stitch looks really nice and polished in the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'm just pulling those first two layers of fabric up and trimming. And that fusible, it's not permanent. So it's, you can just kind of pull it apart. It's permanent enough. It's like temporarily permanent. It's kind of a permanent enough to start your project, but kind of pull it apart. I probably didn't need this many layers, but I kind of like how it looks. And I mean, does it need to be even said that this is going to be purely decorational? <laughs> purely. So now I'm going back through and I am just trimming that fusible fleece, kind of batting. And I also want to mention, it's so this is actually so much better when I did kind of cut those in layers. Now I can go a lot quicker and I know that I'm getting a really clean cut. Um, I also want to mention that you want to be careful because this particular towel has some, these little threads are somewhat loose just because of the design of it. So you wanna make sure you aren't trimming those and ruining them while you're doing your trimming process here. Okay, almost done. That was a really good idea to separate and trim separately. Because now I feel much more confident that I've gotten a nice clean cut along those edges. And that satin stitch is going to look much more polished. Okay, I think I will add just a quick layer of the water soluble topper for this satin stitch part and we will be all ready to go. So let me grab my little wash away topper here and I am simply going to lay it right over the top. You can tape it down if you'd like. This is just gonna help those stitches stay nice and on top of the fabric and not sink into the fabric too much. So I'm just gonna place it right over the top just like that, but we are all ready to go for the satin stitch.
Okay, that looks so nice. So the next little step is going to be a little decorative stitch through that satin stitch, which I absolutely adore when designers do this little detail because it just really looks nice. It's one of my favorite things about when I'm shopping for designs. It's one of the things that I really, really like when I see it included in the design. So I'm just going to change my third color to white and thread my machine and we'll do that little decorative stitch. So it's going right down the center of that satin stitch. Now I'm just going to change my thread color really quickly. Our next is going to be the little spokes on the bicycle and before I do that I think I'll just take away that wash away topper because I think we are good to go now okay okay look at the little detailed stitch do you see the pretty white that goes right down the center of that satin stitch I think it's just so beautiful so you can just simply tear this away it comes right off going to take that off at this point. Did such a beautiful job. And there we are. So we have our little base here. I wanted to make sure that I did some type of base because I think just putting the bicycle on this busy fabric in this busy print would have been way too much. It, you would, I think the bicycle would have gotten lost on the background. So I wanted a nice pretty little base for that to um, go inside of. So let's go ahead and start stitching out the bicycle. This is gonna be really fun to watch this come to life. Okay, so it is really coming together. Let me go this way. It's really coming together. It's so, so cute. And now I'm just going to take my little snips. I'm going to trim around my little bicycle top. And I did go ahead and change my thread color so now it's just going to do the satin stitch over this. I'm going to add a little bit of heat because, I, again, I did do heat and bond light on the back. There we go. Okay, so here's our little bicycle seat, and we'll let it do the finishing stitch, which is a satin stitch around the edge of that.
Okay, so it's finally done. Look at the detail. I love it. It turned out even better than I thought it would. It's just so pretty. And the thread choices, I feel like I really struggle with thread choices and I felt like they all just came together so nicely. I think they tied and pulled in the colors from the towel really well and I just love it. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew this. Then later I can use my frame again for my little baby onesie but let me take all of the little clips off and then we can see it all kind of in its final state so again that was layered on a sticky tear away okay and then I also had one oh I had a let's see what did I do here let's see I've stable blades just a couple days ago so I have a layer of Tear away. So this is a fusible tear away. And then I did a layer of the poly mesh cutaway. And I actually really like how that turned out. So that was a good combination for me. Now, as in every craft, everyone has their own preferences for how they like to stabilize. So feel free to do what works for you. And you can clean up as much or as little on the back as you'd like. Just making sure I don't cut into my tea towel as I'm trimming away my cutaway here. Okay, perfect. Oh my goodness, looks so great. So I'm just gonna kind of fold this in place to get an idea of what it's gonna look like. And then here is my cute little towel. Don't you think it's so sweet? I just think it's so perfect for spring. I love this time of year when everything gets a little bit more bright and fun. And I think this is gonna brighten up the kitchen really well. So here's the detail. I think it's so pretty. And I love the little tassels at the bottom. So another craft done and I can move on to my next little idea for spring. Okay, so I have another fun little craft here and this in terms of spring is a little bit more of me kind of giving the house a fresh new feel. So I like to bring out a few new pieces and this one's going to be a little laundry room decor. So I am shopping my craft space more and more this year. I've mentioned in every video and I know so many of you are doing it too. Every once in a while, of course, I do need to go grab something new, but I am trying to look at the blanks that I have and these are two items well we have three here but these are two things that i have had for a while now and i really didn't know what to do with them so first of all these are little square coasters these are from michael's i believe i'll try to link them down below and i used one of the four they come in a four pack i believe I used one of them in a recent Valentine's Day video, but I decided to use the final three and I'm gonna pair it with this little slatted wood sign. I purchased this from Hobby Lobby quite a while ago. It's an unfinished wood plaque is what it's called and I really like it, but I find it kind of challenging to be inspired with just because there are some openings here. So what I wanted to do was you can definitely paint this, take it in any direction that you'd like, but I thought I had these two kind of visions and I thought I'd just kind of bring them together with these two pieces. So what I'm going to do is I did apply some chalk paint. To, these are bare wood, but I applied some chalk paint to these three pieces. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put three little um, images on each one and then I'm going to glue them inside of here. This is going to be a cute little hanging decor. I probably most likely will take this off and it will probably just set up on a shelf in our laundry room just like so. Um, but you can always hang these as well. So that's where I'm going with this. I like the idea that I'm using what I have and I also like the idea that just by adding these little wood pieces in, I'm bringing some dimension to this piece, but I'm also combating this problem that I was having with being inspired with this piece where I had, you know, these little slats and I mean, it's pretty in theory, but sometimes it can be hard to work with when it comes to being inspired. Just my personal opinion and kind of how I was um, kind of thinking through this, but let me know if you're the same way with sometimes you're thinking a blank is amazing, but then you end up having it for quite a while because you're not quite sure what to do with it. Okay, so I'm gonna cut these apart. I have three 
cute little SVGs. It came in a pack and it actually came in a pack of four, but I have a little trio going on here. So this, it's going to say wash, dry, and hang. Now there is an additional one that says fold. And of course I really want to, to, it wanted it to say wash, dry, fold, because obviously that is the nature of the business, right? However, I really loved, I'll show you the, um, the hang in here. The clothespins on the little hang icon were so cute. I just, I couldn't say no to them. So it's my laundry room, my decor. So I figured I would just do what I want, but go ahead and run in any direction you'd like with this. This one is going to be the dry and I'm just using some scrap vinyl that I had. So really this is just little piece of decor that's coming together with a lot of things that have been sitting around my craft space. So coming to life here is a dryer. Super cute. Okay, I'm going really careful here. Got some smaller pieces. There we go. How cute is that? Now, I want to say on one of these, I had to realign the word underneath. So I can't remember if it was on wash, dry, or hang. Um, the word was definitely off center. So I had to fix that in design space. So just be mindful of that. Okay, so I'm going to probably put dry in the middle. I'll just get them all done and then we'll decide. Okay. Then let's do the wash right here. So let me know, what are you like with laundry? I am definitely, I, ha I have to have it like wash, dried, folded, and put away. I can't just have things half done, if that makes sense. It drives me kind of crazy. And I, but I also kind of find laundry to be very therapeutic. I'm not sure why I love folding it. I know this is a very unpopular opinion. I'm kind of the same way with vacuuming too, but we've talked about this because so many of you shared my love of vacuum lines in the carpet. There is nothing more gratifying than vacuum lines in the carpet. Okay. And this little piece. Okay. So again, not really spring decor traditionally, like you would see flowers and that, but I'm giving my little home somewhat of a little spring refresh in terms of bringing in a couple new pieces. So this had to go into my spring video for sure. Okay, look at the cute little wash. I love the little water line there. So pretty. And I loved the little swish and the beautiful text. Again, I don't have um, the font names or any, D um, details about those because it is an SVG. And the last one, this is the one I just could not say no to. You'll see why in a second. Or maybe you'll think, oh, I could have done without that, but I just could not with the cute little clothespins. I thought they were just so fun. Okay, this one is hang. And go back through and get a couple little detail pieces. Okay, there we go. Cute little final piece. I think these are so cute. This is gonna look really fresh and nice. I love that about the, the little color choices. I love a natural wood paired with a white and then I love a gray. So I love just how soft this all ends up looking. I just think it's so pretty and it's right up my decor alley, if that makes sense. Okay, so grabbing transfer tape, we can absolutely do all three of these with one piece. So just grab one to get an idea for the size. Grab a little corner. I like to kind of mimic my method of pulling away vinyl with my weeding tool, like I would weed. And that's how I take away that transfer tape. Okay, so I'll be sure to link my favorite chalk paint. Y'all know my favorite chalk paint, but if you're brand new here, 
I will definitely get you obsessed with it because it's amazing. So I did, I think two coats, definitely two. And it just looks so nice. Okay, go in the back. And let's see here. Oop, almost lost some of my design. There we go. Okay, there's our first one. And I'm gonna bring these out individually so I can just really focus. Oh, that looks so nice. Okay, just like so. And scrape down. And we will reuse the transfer tape. Whoop. Well, part of that was kind of coming up. Ooh, let's see here. I got a little confident there. There we go. Okay. There we go. Very, very sweet. Look how nice that looks just looks so fresh. Okay. It's the only way I can really describe it. It's just very fresh looking. I love the contrast of a dark gray with a white and then paired with a really nice natural wood is just, ooh, I love it. Okay. Doing the second one and the third. I'm going to get this all done. Although I'll be honest with you, I don't really air dry anything. <laughs> Unless it was super expensive and then I probably would, but it's kind of like, um, it's very much like actually things that can't go in the dishwasher just do not belong in my house. <laughs> we have a couple things that we definitely hand wash, but oh my goodness, there have been some things where I hand washed them the first couple times because it was recommended and then... I gave up on that. Ooh, I need to admit that, but it's just so true. So I'm kind of like that with laundry too. If it can't go in the dryer, ugh, I don't really have much of it. And if it can't go in the dishwasher, same story. <laughs> okay. Although I will say there are a few things that I have that are definitely worth washing by hand. So... We have a really nice, um, oh, I can't even remember the brand. It's a really nice, um, like a spaghetti pot almost. And I like a Dutch oven. So nice. And it's definitely worth washing by hand. It's so pretty. Okay. Off on a tangent there, but you know me, I like to just chat with y'all. Okay. So this is kind of where we're going. It's just coming together exactly how I envisioned it. I definitely think I'm going to take these off, but I'll worry about that later. So for adhesive, I like hot glue. I just do. It is just my favorite ever. Feel free to use the method of choice when it comes to adhe adhesive that you would like to use, but me and hot glue are good old pals. So I'm going to make sure that I have them placed where I want them before I get started. And then what I'll do is, I think that looks good. I'm going to start in the middle and looks like I'm going to have to do a bead on the top and then push that down a bead in the middle and maybe a bead on the bottom. Okay. I think that's probably going to be about good. Oh, okay, I said that and then I went a little crazy. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna make sure that's nice and straight. Oh, that looks good. And it feels good. Do you ever just have confidence once you hot glue something? You're just like, that is gonna stay. That's how I feel about hot glue. Every time I use it, I'm like, oh, you're good to go. Okay. All right. Ooh, then here. One. Kind of a fun one in the middle and down here. Okay. Go and bring that one down a little bit. I also like that you can 
glue, hot glue is instantly gratifying. It dries very quickly, but you have a couple seconds where you can really move it around. Okay. That looks nice. And the last one. So the method of choice was one line, two line, and wavy line. I'm making this up as I go, but it's success. Okay. Maybe move it over a little bit. There we go. Oh, that feels real good. Okay, there we go. Love that. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, this is something you could totally see at, you know, Marshall's Home Goods. For sure. For sure. The only thing, the only thing look looking back, but I will share it so that you can make the um the choice for yourself. If taking these off, make this the bottom. Yes, because then your top, you don't have any of those holes from where your staples are going to be. I don't know. I kind of like that. Even if I don't hang it, it's kind of a nice little, no, I'll probably take it off. I was going to say it's kind of some nice texture, but knowing me, I'm going to probably take that off. So I'll just probably figure out something for those little staples. But honestly, it'll probably be high on a shelf, so I probably won't see them anyway. But very pretty. I like how that turned out. It's exactly how I envisioned it. And I'm really happy that I got to use some of these things that have been sitting around, especially this big piece, because it's been taking up some room in my craft space. And now I can go shopping for more things. Yes. Thumbs up. I am just kidding. That was totally a trick question, but making room for some new things, right? That's always so fun. Okay. So we have the little onesie to do. Then I'm going to do another vinyl craft and then I'm going to sublimate a garden flag because I noticed the other day that I had Valentine's day decor on my front door and I had a Christmas garden flag up. I don't know how I miss putting the Christmas garden flag away. So yeah, my, the front of my house kind of looked a little conflicted, looked a little hot messy. So we need to get a garden flag up for the springtime. So we're going to sublimate a garden flag in just a few minutes. So let's go ahead and stitch out this cute little onesie. So I have this floating on my Jerky Easy Frames. I love the Jerky Easy Frames for floating and also for onesies. And I have the little sewing clips on here. I also, even though this doesn't look like it's centered, on the frame. This is centered on the shirt. So it's a really cute little shamrock. And we're going to do some applique on here with a variety of, um, well, two fabrics, but we're going to just intermingle them. It's so cute. And I think this is going to look so cute for the little guy for St. Patrick's Day. So let's go ahead and get started. It's going to be super quick, super easy. Then we'll do two more crafts and I think we will be done for today. Okay. So loading my cute little onesie and my frame onto the machine double checking underneath to make sure that that arm is there and it's preventing the back of the onesie from being sewn onto the front again i am going to center my design so let's do that really quickly referencing the let's jump that up a little bit i'm referencing my little laser there there we go, centering that, and then we are going to trace to make sure that my needle does not come towards the edge of my frame. Again, you do that because you're making sure um, that your needle isn't going to hit your frame, but you want to especially do that when you're using frames that don't come with your machine. So let's trace real quick. That looks good. I'm just watching where the laser is going, and I know where the edge of my frame is the inner edge. Okay, we are good to go. So also being mindful of this little bunched up part, the neckline, take my design off and we will start with the placement stitch for our first applique piece. Doesn't matter what your thread color is right now, but you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and change it all out to, to the green really quick because we're only using one thread color for this project. It's going to be very quick. And I think it's just a bean stitch. So it says we only have a total of three minutes of stitching, which is amazing. Of course, that doesn't take into account your applique time. to 
go back and forth between a nice gingham and then a really nice subtle polka dot. I think those are going to look really great together. So the top one will be the gingham and we'll just go an AB pattern. Okay, so I have Heat and Bond Light on the back. I'm just going to lay that right there. Because this has, it's so directional, I really want the gingham to be straight if possible. So I'm going to try to line that up. So it's nice and straight. We'll see how straight we can get that. Okay, that looks pretty good. It might not be perfect, but it looks pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim that and then it will do the final stitch for that piece. Okay, that did really, really good. Okay, so I'm gonna use my little snips here and so I got the Kimberbell scissor set and I've been using it pretty exclusively and I really like it. And these little snips came in the scissor set. I really, really like the set. It just comes with a nice variety. Okay. Ooh, I did really good on that first one. That looks nice. Okay, so now Let's just iron that piece down and then we'll move on to the little finishing stitch there and then we'll just go back and forth. So I'm going to play some fun music that way you can just relax and enjoy this being or start to come together and I'll meet you back here in a second. Okay, that is so cute. I love it. It is so sweet. I'm gonna just iron down that last little bit. It's just precious. Precious, precious, precious. Now, I didn't do as amazing with my gingham on the second try, but you know what? It's so cute. I love it regardless. It's gonna be perfect for St. Patrick's Day. And I really love, I just love applique. I love that you can mix and match with fabrics. It's just definitely my style. So let me grab my lint roller. Make sure I get all those little scrap pieces off. Oh, this is darling. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my little shirt from the frame here. Now this is on some sticky stabilizer, of course, because we floated it. Okay. There we go. And let me go inside out really quickly, get that all cleaned up. I'm sure getting a lot of things off my task list today when it comes to spring. I've had this kind of fun spring list going for a while, so it's nice to see it all come to life. I'm sure you feel the same about your crafts. I kind of have piles all around my craft room of things that I hope to complete this season, so it's really nice to see those piles of supplies turn into actual finished crafts. I kind of feel like the fairy godmother and I'm like 
bibbity bobbity boo <laughs> what is once a pile of supplies is now a finished craft okay so cute I'm gonna iron this fusible cutaway back down just like I did the girls shirts and then I will go back through here and actually I'm gonna do that really quick I'm just gonna pick that out because if you leave that in there it just it makes it like a shield it's just too stiff so I'm gonna take that out sometimes it's nice to use just to poke now don't poke your shirt you just kind of get a little bit up off there so I'm taking away that sticky stabilizer and my cutaway or my um, I'm sorry my tear away cutaways in there and the reason I did the layer of tear away on top of the sticky is because I kind of feel like the sticky makes a big mess sometimes so I like to have a barrier on between my it just kind of helps that sticky come off easier when I can when I have something underneath that releases a lot easier if that makes sense okay there we go okay so it takes a few extra moments but it's really worth it because that just really softens everything up okay ironing down that fusible poly mesh one more time and that just goes right back onto the shirt looks so nice and then I'm gonna get some tender touch really quickly for this one my girls don't care about tender touch at all they don't it when I, if I don't put it on their shirts they don't mention anything at all so because tender touch it really isn't my favorite I'm going to I don't really worry about it with my girls and they don't seem to have a problem with that um, but with my little guy who who may I'm not sure quite yet I'm going to do the tender touch and this just the tender touch is just a little barrier between their sweet little skin I'm just cleaning up some threads and the um, threads so some kiddos might find it just kind of itchy or bothersome this is actually pretty soft but I'll do that anyway just because okay let me grab it okay here is my tender touch and really quickly iron that on that way when I'm done crafting today I don't have to go back and finish any little task everything will be truly complete sometimes when I am done filming I'll say oh I'll go do that later or I'll get that done after but sometimes after and later just does not happen so if I can just take the extra few minutes now I'll be thankful for that later okay I'm just softening my edges it's known to help the tender touch stay better I really haven't found that to really help I don't know if it makes it worse or I don't know that it makes it worse but mine mine still doesn't really stay put very well but I have a whole roll of it so I'm kind of determined to finish it off before I buy something new okay Okay, perfect. Let's check out the front, get the final look. So cute. Oh my goodness. We're gonna find a little press. And how handsome. Oh, love it so much. That is so cute very cute okay let's do let's sublimate the garden flag I really want to get that done that way I can hang that up and then after that I have one more vinyl craft and I think my list will be all crossed off okay oh my goodness I am really excited about this so 
I have a sublimation garden flag. Let's do a quick review for sublimation just because it's um, a repetitive question I get, so I wanna make sure that I answer it up front. So when doing sublimation, you do need to have a sublimation printer with sublimation ink. I like to print on sublimation paper as well. And when you are going to sublimate, you do need to make sure that whatever you are sublimating on is a sublimation blank. So you want to make sure, I thought that was a, that was a thread, but I thought it was a stain. Um, you want to make sure that if you're doing a coffee mug, it's a sublimation coffee mug. If you're doing a garden flag, it's a sublimation garden flag or so on and so forth. So with t-shirts, same thing. You want to make sure that they are appropriate for accepting the sublimation process. So. I have a sublimation garden flag. I have some designs printed out on my sublimation printer. How many times can I say sublimation? But we're trying to make sure you understand that um, it is a special process. You can't just use any ink. You can't just use any blank. So I found a cute, cute design. I've had this in my cart for a while and I finally clicked buy. So I have a Sawgrass SG500. I'll link it down below. That's my sublimation printer and it prints eight and a half by 11. So what I did was I kind of sliced apart my design so that I could print a little bit bigger. The original file said spring is coming, but I printed this pretty big and I can't, I don't think I can fit is coming. So I think I'm just going to say spring on here. I think that'll be really cute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply trim around my design so that they're all ready to go and I am a hunter boot girl I love hunter boots so when I saw this I just knew that this was the perfect little design for me and then you'll notice that this is backwards when you are doing a sublimation design you want to make sure you mirror the design because the next step will be placing it down on our um, blank. So we want to make sure that when we press it, it's going to press in the correct direction. Okay, so the first step is going to be we are going to pre-press this. So we want to make sure that we pre-press it. Part of the reason is to remove any of the wrinkles. Another reason is to make sure that we don't have any moisture in the garments because we don't want um, any moisture that will affect the sublimation process. Another thing is when it comes to your hands, when you're doing sublimation, you wanna make sure that they are very dry and free from any lotion. So luckily I don't have any lotion on right now. I did earlier, but I gave myself a good hand wash. They are all dry. That's because you don't wanna disrupt the ink. So I have my nice dry and clean hands. And other than that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get a very fresh lint tape, lint roller tape here so that that's all set. And I'm gonna get some butcher paper and let's go to the heat press. Okay, so I'm just gonna get the whole process all ready. So I am going to place butcher paper below and I'm going to place my flag right on here and then put butcher paper on top. And we're just gonna do a pre-press first. Okay, here we go, just about five seconds or so and then this is a great opportunity to check your pressure last time we used this what were we making earlier we were doing oh the pillowcase so that was much thicker so now that we have a thinner item we want to make sure we adjust that pressure that's good and then I have something on my heat press I have to clean that later okay so turn this around I wonder if it was something from my carrier sheet from the foil iron on. I'll have to see how I can get that cleaner later. But right now I'm not going to worry too much about it because I have the butcher paper protecting my flag so the butcher paper will absorb that. And that I'll be researching how to spot clean my heat press. Okay. There we go. Okay, so now We've got that pre-pressed. I'm gonna take that butcher paper off and I'm probably just gonna get a new piece. Got something on there. Okay, I'm going to, let's take this and lint roll really well. I'm gonna make sure that we don't get, have any lint. Ooh, it's on here. Okay. Okay, and then let's get our design all ready. Okay, so I have some heat resistant tape. So if you want to use a tape, I recommend it for this because 
there's nothing really securing your design so you want to make sure that you have it so it's not moving around and if you if your sublimation design does move around then you can risk it smudging and ghosting which means it's kind of repeating the print or not getting a crisp print you'll see it's kind of smudgy so I think I'm gonna lay it this way really quick this is not the way you sublimate but I kind of want to see which way I want to do it I think I want to do spring with the the boots on top I think that'll be really cute so I'm gonna lay the spring part down here and this is how I kind of do a larger design with my sublimation printer that only prints eight and a half by 11. I believe there's a bypass tray though that can help let it print bigger, but I haven't invested in that because you can just print a couple times and do the same thing. Unless you're doing obviously something that can't be split apart, then that gets a little tricky, but okay, here we go. And then obviously it's a little bit tricky because you can't see through the paper, but I feel like you can get a good idea of where center is. Okay, and then I'll tape that down. Okay, as a reminder though, make sure you have a heat resistant tape. You don't want to melt any tape on your press. Okay, I'm gonna grab a new sheet of butcher paper and we'll press this on. Okay, so I'm going to do this in two presses. Let's see, I think I'm going to actually go this way because then I can do all of the boots together and then I can do the spring. Could I actually do all of it? I don't think so. Hmm. I might take the spring part off for now because I feel like it's going to try to sublimate some of it. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, I'll do the spring part in a second. So I'm going to take that part off. That be Because I think my press is going to try to sublimate some of it and you only want to sublimate one time. So I think it would be wiser just to do the boots first. Okay, I've got that there. I also have my new butcher paper on top. The butcher paper is going to protect your press and vice versa. Um, in case your if you in, in case your sublimation ink does um, bleed, then you want that to go on the paper and not your press. So we're gonna start our press, and I'm just making sure I have it all within the heat range. And I'm doing 400 degrees for one minute. I need to set that to a minute. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so I do have some, you can see, I think you can see, you see the little um, ink that sublimated onto the paper? So now that that has happened, we cannot reuse this paper. So I'm going to go ahead and toss that and get a new sheet before I do the second little part. And I'm just going to bring this down. And then I'm going to attach the spring down here. get some new paper and then I'm going to peel this off that way it doesn't sublimate twice oh my gosh oh my gosh that's so pretty okay you'll see in just a second let's do the second part I'm gonna grab some new butcher paper to cover the whole thing oh my gosh new butcher paper And let's do that little bottom part. Oh, so cute. Okay, and you, you see why we also put a whole sheet on there. It's because some of that ink that we just sublimated wanted to bleed back on. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Okay, let's go over to the other camera. Well, I can show you here, but go over to the other camera too. And then on the bottom, you can also see it bled onto the back. So 
really good that we had the, our, our butcher paper. So, so cute. Okay, here is the final garden flag. How cute is that? And this is a PNG. So if you didn't want to do a garden flag, you wanted to make it um, a shirt, or if you wanted to make a little coffee mug or something like that, that would be so pretty as well. I think this is so adorable. So cute. And finally, I'm going to have my act together in my front yard because I'm not going to have Christmas and Valentine's. I'm, I'm, I'm not even that girl. I am not even that girl. I always have it. Well, and I don't want, I say that, I say that politely, but I usually have things a little bit more put together than that. So I just had to laugh when I noticed that. <sighs> oh, well, you know, you win some, you lose some, but we're going to be winning some tomorrow. And I totally bring this out. It's going to be so cute. I love it. Okay, final craft of the day. I am repurposing this cute little whiteboard and blackboard easel. I want to say, I don't think I have a sticker on it. I want to say I probably got this at Michael's. I really think I did. Um, but, and I did something for my craft room on here. You probably remember me doing that. If not, that's okay. I didn't end up loving it in the end, so I took the vinyl off. Um, it just didn't really have a home in my craft space. So I've been keeping this blank handy because now I have another idea for it. So in the theme of spring and spring cleaning and spring revamping, I am going to revamp this cute little sign and I'm going to make a little menu dry erase board for our kitchen because I think it's a brilliant idea that needs to happen. <laughs> So I found this cute SVG, I'll link it down below. And when I saw it, I instantly thought I have a blank that definitely needs to be put into use for this menu board. So I'm gonna weed this really quick. I love the cute little embellishments on the side. I think you know by now about me that I do love a good little vine decor just looks so nice whoops got a little got a little fast there so you'll see this come to life in just a moment while big it's going to be a very easy piece to weed and this will definitely come in handy in our house now you could print it or you could cut this also on white vinyl and do the chalkboard side and I originally thought of doing that but we are um we tend to use the whiteboard markers a lot we have lots of little things on our fridge for whiteboard markers so I just kind of thought it would probably work best plus I never have very good success with the chalkboard markers so I didn't really want to fight with that weekly so I have a set of the little chalkboard markers but just don't no, they're just not amazing to me. Maybe I'm doing something incorrectly. And I feel like they don't erase very easily as well. Okay, so then we have our little, so weekly menu, obviously. Then we have our little areas here to write. You could save these long strips if you needed to use them for anything. I don't have a purpose for them, so I'm going to toss them. I like to save as much as I can, but I also try to be realistic about what I will reuse and what I won't. So if I know it's just going to sit around, I'll just toss it. Okay, now going very carefully here, I'm going to it's kind of weeding out a negative space, almost like you would you're doing a stencil here. There's gonna be a tiny little part in here that needs to stay. Ooh, voila, it did. And that tiny little S. Okay, Sunday, Monday. I'm get this all ready to go.
Okay, there we go. That was easy peasy, actually. Now I have out the alphabet on my little fingers here. Okay, we are, oh, and an O, an L and an O B. Okay, we are good to go. So that goes there, and let's do our transfer tape. Now, I don't think I was explaining that I did rub that down with a rubbing alcohol earlier. And that's all set to go. Okay, so similar to what I was doing earlier when I did a larger piece, I'm just gonna expose about an inch. I just find it's easier than having an entire huge surface area of sticky, <laughs> if that makes sense. And I just I find that to be really overwhelming. That could be just me, but it's hard for me to, as you can see, it's, it's sometimes it's even just a struggle to line up a tiny little piece. And the reason I'm kind of restarting this is because I do want to take advantage of the grid lines here for this as best I can. Okay. Try to get those as straight as possible, if possible. And then again, pulling and just allowing that to naturally fall in place. Okay, there we go. Wonderful. Just trim away down here. Okay. And using our squeegee. I feel like we have had a dry erase menu board before and really liked it. I'm not sure really what happened to it. Maybe naturally we, I don't know. Sometimes I redecorate. Does anybody else redecorate and then toss things and then realize that you just go and replace them? <sighs> I'm so guilty of that. Okay. But to be fair, sometimes it's just the style has changed or just want a fresh look. And this time I'm making it, so that's cool. Okay, last craft. My craft room is a little messy, so it needs a good little freshening up after this. There we go. Okay. Now we have our board. I may do the parchment paper method again. This will just help me line everything up nicely. Again, placing everything but just a little bit of that vinyl onto the parchment paper. Okay. And when I can see through, pardon the ripping noise, one moment. When I can see through that parchment paper, it'll help me really line it up. It might be almost better to line that up from the bottom. Okay. That looks... Whoops. Oh, goodness, now I'm moving it. That looks good to me. Let me bring it down just a little bit. Maybe over a little bit. Okay, final answer. Ooh. Okay, I think that looks good. So I'm gonna press down that top part and start pulling this out. good okay going with the scraper this looks very nice they look really really classy and fun okay and then I'm gonna just take my time on the little days of the week there as 
super easy. Again, you could um, do the blackboard side or the chalkboard, blackboard, chalkboard um, side of this as well. I really wanted to do that so we could have some contrast in our kitchen because we have um, white subway tile and white countertops and really light cabinets. But again, I just can't get past the chalkboard marker that doesn't work very well. So that's why I went with the whiteboard. Okay, look at that. That is sleek. Looks super nice. I'm gonna save that. And there we have it. It's just beautifully designed. I really like that. And it's gonna be very functional. So a little bit of spring cleaning, a little bit of spring sprucing up the kitchen. And I think this is gonna be a really loved little piece of very functional art in our kitchen. Okay, I got everything done that I really intended to, so I'm very excited. I am really, really happy with how this turned out because it's exactly how I envisioned it. I really like the color choices. I think it just looks really nice. Plus, it's just a bonus that all of these things have been in my craft space for some time, and they finally have been put to use. So not only is it kind of clearing out and spring cleaning my craft space, but it's using things that I have. So this was a very inexpensive project for me since I've had these in my little craft space for a while. And we're also refreshing another little space in the home. So I love this. It just kind of like checked a bunch of little things off my list in one craft. So the other thing that I'm really, really, really tickled with is this planter. I think this turned out really, really nice. I feel like it was a stinker to weed and a stinker to get off the transfer tape, but in the end, it's going to definitely be very loved because it just turned out really, really classy. I feel like it's very sophisticated looking. It feels like something you would definitely purchase and I love that I was able to create that myself. So very proud of myself for that. Another thing I really enjoyed making was this welcome to our hive pillow. I really love that foil iron on and please don't be intimidated by it because it is so easy to use and it just is so pretty. I love it. So I will link it down below. Of course, I want to say I, I, I think it's probably the rose gold color because I feel like that's something that I would buy, but I'll try and double check. Okay, then we did a lot of embroidering. So I have this shirt all done. I did this as my test stitch earlier before the video. So that one turned out perfect as well. And then I love that it coordinates with the little baby's onesie. And I really, really love how those two cute little patterns went together. I think that's just so cute. So I love that. I think it's going to be really fun and I love how they're just subtle and simple, but they definitely check the box for St. Patrick's Day. Okay. This little spring sign turned out really darling. It's very easy to do, very inexpensive. Again, I use that little metal piece that you can use with infusible ink. I've had those in my stash for quite a while now, but I haven't quite been inspired. However, last night I was inspired by something that I'm going to do and actually do sublimation on it. So stay tuned for that. That will be coming up because I put aside the other one. I can't remember if it comes in a pack of two or four. I'll have to check, but I have plenty of these left over because I only used one for this project. So I definitely was inspired with finally how to do it with some sublimation and what to do. So hopefully that turns out so I can bring that to the channel. Okay, this cutting board definitely has been on my little to-do list, and I feel like this was a perfect addition to this little spring-themed video. I think this is going to give the perfect refresh for our kitchen, plus I just love the tones that are just coming out of this pretty, pretty cutting board. Again, this was Hobby Lobby, and at Hobby Lobby, I think it was the same trip, I picked up this really, really nice dish towel, and I really love the bicycle embroidery that I did on the top of that. So very easy, very easy when you have some easy frames that you can just float your design on. But I just think that turned out really nice. And I really like the double layer of the white fabric as well as that batting that I put under there. It just gave it a little bit of dimension and it just looks really, really polished in person. So definitely, definitely proud. You know I'm new to my embroidery machine. It is probably about six months old. Yeah, it's about six months old. And so I'm still very, very new to it, but 
I'm in that phase where I'm very proud of myself when I can accomplish things like this. Okay, and we have our weekly menu. I think this turned out really sweet. It was very simple. It's just vinyl and some sort of base. So again, this is double-sided. So if you wanted to do the inverse and do white vinyl on the chalkboard side, then definitely do that. But again, I decided to do it on the whiteboard side. So I love that really happy with how the sublimation flag turned out and in fact the second I turn my studio lights off I'm going right outside to put this right on our little garden flag stand because I just love how this turned out it's so cute so vibrant and I love those little boots so sweet so I hope things are starting to bloom in your little area that you live in or you're getting some signs of spring. It's really refreshing to finally see a change in season. So I hope this was a fun video for you to watch. I will see you in a couple weeks, but also be sure to check out the community tab as well because I'll be sharing what I'm doing behind the scenes there as well so you can see that pillow start to take shape. Also pray for me and wish me luck. This is the first big project that I have done like this. I have all of the supplies, everything ready. I just need to do the first stitch. So I'm gonna be doing that behind the scenes. I believe the next video when I come back in a couple weeks, I'm hoping it's going to be a live. So I hope that you keep your eye out for that so that you know when that's gonna be scheduled. Pinky promise that's the plan, but all things can change too. All right, everyone, hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.